we can see ili tuweze kuimba muda wote praise the name of the lord this morning bwana yesu asifiwe asubuhi ya leo i'm happy to stand before you ina furai kusimama mbele yenu because the lord has been merciful to me kwa sababu mungu amenineemesha lord has been merciful to you too mungu amekunemesha na wewe and that's why you are here and ndio maana uko hapa turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor geukia jirani umwambie jirani this is not an ordinary service hii sio ibada ya kawaida said like you mean it this is not an ordinary service useme ukimaanisha kwamba hii sio ibada ya kawaida you know god is not god of numbers mejua mungu si mungu wa hesabu he only looks for people who are ready to be used anatazamia watu ambao wako tayari kutumiwa the bible says weak men biblia yasema watu wanyonge people who are discontented watu ambao wanachoka people who are failures watu ambao wanaanguka hawatoboi haleluya 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 they came to david <coughs> walimjia daudi and after having an encounter with david baada ya kukutana na Daudi the bible says after some time biblia yasema baada ya muda they became mighty men of valor wakawa washujaa hallelujah hallelujah and after some time baada ya muda house of worship house of worship shall become takuwa mighty men and women of valor washujaa If you believe it say amen. Ukiamini hiyo sema amina. Today leo there is a message that the Lord wants us to hear. Kuna uchumbe ambapo Mungu anataka tusikize. And uh, maybe you are used to a loud shout. Labda umezoea sauti ya juu and horse power. Na nguvu. But permit me today to speak lakini uniruhusu leo nizungumze and we are going to have a conversation na tutakuwa na mawasiliano beginning let me just begin with Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 kwanza tuanze na kumbukumbu la Torati Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7 verse 9 kumbukumbu la Torati 7 na mstari wa 9 the bible says no therefore that the lord thy god he is god the faithful god which keepeth covenant and the mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generation kwa kwamba bwana mungu wenu ndiye mungu mwaminifu asikiaye agano lake na rehema zake kwao wampendao na kushika amri zake hata vizazi elfu. i don't know the god you know Sijui unamfahamu Mungu yupi But today I want to introduce you to a God the Bible says he is God. Lakini leo nataka nikutambulishe kwa Mungu ambaye Biblia yasema yeye ni Mungu. Looking on the screen is not a small g God. Eh, so, tukiangalia kwenye runinga pale sio Mungu ameandikwa na herufi he is God ndogo. God with capital letter. Ni Mungu ameandikwa na herufi G. He is Mungu. God the creator of the universe. Ni Mungu aliyeumba dunia. He is God and is not like a man. Ni Mungu na si kama binadamu. He says in Numbers 23:19. Anasema kitabu cha kumbukumbu la Torati 23:19. I am not like a man. Anasema mimi si kama binadamu. That I should repent. Ili nikaweze kutubu. What is it that God has said and he will never fulfill? Ni nini hiyo Mungu amesema na hata waitimiza? Therefore we have fellowship that we may worship God. Kwa hivyo tunakuwa na ushirika ili tukaweze kumwabudu Mungu. And the Bible says is not only god but he is a faithful god lakini ni mungu mwaminifu i know we are here because some of us we are a victim of unfaithfulness na sasa wengine tuko hapa na sisi ni tumegua ya kutoaminifu ama uaminifu tumeathirika na uaminifu ukosefu wa uaminifu 
Amen. So we have been a victim of unfaithfulness. Tumeathiriwa na uaminifu. Labda in your business somebody promised to stand with you. Labda kwa biashara mtu alikuahidi atasimama nawe. But nawe. that person failed. Lakini huyo mtu akakosa kufanya hivyo. People have promised to always stand with you. Watu wamewahi kuahidi wasimame nawe. But they nawe. have failed. Lakini hawajatimiza. But today I thank God you came to the right place. Lakini nashukuru Mungu leo ulikuja mahali We are kufa. in front of a faithful God. Tuko mbele za Mungu mwaminifu. And he says that he is was. I think in 2 Corinthians 1:20 if I'm not wrong. Na anasema ya kwamba maneno yake He says kwa... that the words the promises of God. Anasema ya kwamba ahadi za Mungu. They are yes and amen. Ni ndio na amina. They never change. Ashibadiliki. So if God promised in the beginning of the year kwa hivyo kama Mungu alikuahidi jambo wakati tulipoanza mwaka to rise. Lakini lakini kwamba ni mwaka wetu wa kuinuka. Let me tell you that our God never changes. Wacha nikwambie Mungu wetu abadiliki. If God said that he will heal you. Akisema ya kwamba atakuponya. Continue waiting in the Lord. Endelea kungoja Bwana. For you shall receive your miracle. Kwa maana utapokea muujiza wako. The God I present to you house of worship. Mungu ambao ninawaletea house of worship. Is not a God that fails his promise. Sio Mungu ambaye anakosa kutimiza ahadi. But he is a faithful God. Lakini ni Mungu muaminifu. And the Bible says he's not just God and faithful. Na Biblia inasema kwamba sio Mungu tu lakini muaminifu. He's also a covenant keeper. Na pia ni Mungu wa kutimiza. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor our God is a covenant keeper. Leokea jirani mwambie Mungu wetu anatiunza agano. So many people have broken covenants. Watu wengi wamevunja maagano. Even us we have broken covenants. Hata nasi tumevunja maagano. There are covenants we have made even in this church. Kuna agano tumefanya Some of us we have made promises that God if you do this I will do that. Wengine wetu tumeahidi ya kwamba Mungu ukinifanyia hiki nitafanya kile. But if you look back you have a record of broken covenants. Lakini ukiangalia uko na agano mingi ambayo zimevunjwa. You promise to stand with somebody. Uliahidi kusimama na mtu. You promise to be a support to someone. Uliahidi You promised before people and you said I will never be a reason you will suffer pain. Uliahidi mbele ya watu ukasema mimi sitakuwa sababu ya uchungu wako. We are human beings. Lakini kwa sababu sisi ni wanadamu. We always break covenants. Huwa tunavunja maagano. But I love this God. Lakini nampenda huyu Mungu. The Bible says he is a covenant keeper. Biblia yasema anashika agano lake. And then there is another thing the Bible says. Na kuna jambo lingine Biblia yasema. That he has mercy ya kwamba anarehema he shows mercy anaonyesha ama anawarehemu to those who follow his commands wale wanaofuata agano lake and the bible says that his mercy is not for one day na biblia yasema rehema zake si za siku moja his mercy is not for one man rehema yake si ya mwezi mmoja his mercy is not for one year rehema zake si ya mwaka mmoja but the bible says that his mercy is mercy pressed to a thousand generation lakini biblia yasema ya kwamba rehema zake zinafuata in the name of Jesus. Mungu na kuonyeshe rehema kwa may jina Yesu. generation and is, may not may they not suffer because they lack the mercy of God in Jesus name. Kizazi chako kisiangamie kwa sababu wamekosa rehema ya Mungu kwa jina la Yesu. Mercy rehema shall extend to a thousand generation. Rehema zake zitakuwa kwa vizazi hadi elfu. Another scripture I'm building my sermon. Andiko nyingine na jenga ujumbe wangu. Second Chronicles 26. Mambo ya nyakati ya pili 26. Verse 14 to 15. Na mstari wa 14 hadi 15. Second Chronicles 26. Mambo ya nyakati ya pili 26. Verse 14 to 15 stari wa 14 hadi 15 The Bible says if you read from verse 1 going downwards Ukianza kwa mstari wa kwanza ukiteremka The Bible is talking about King Uzziah Biblia inazungumzia mfalme Uzia A young boy kijana mdogo who entered to the kingship ambaye aliingia katika ufalme at age 16 miaka 16 And the Bible says somewhere I don't know whether it's verse 10 Na Biblia inasema mahali sijui kama ni mstari wa Uzziah sought the Lord. Na kwamba mfalme Uzia alimtafuta Mungu. He is of Zakaria. Wakati wa Zakaria. Who had the understanding of the vision of God. Ambaye alikuwa na ufahamu wa Mungu. And the Bible says the Lord made this 
begin to prosper. As we are seeking the king of kings. May we also prosper in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that God gave him wisdom. God gave him knowledge. That he was preparing the weapons of war. So from verse 14 says, And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. Nasema Uzaya kawafanyiza jeshi lote ngao na mikuki na chepeo na dereya za madini na nyuta na mawe ya kupigwa kwa uteo. I don't know whether you saw one of the slings niliona kisumu inashikwa na watu watatu. Ile kitu ya kurusha ilikuwa inakaa kimuti kikubwa hivi. Hiyo kombeo the sling so they were holding three people and then wanaeka mawe na toshana kichwa ya mtu and they throw it so god gave uzaya that wisdom that they were preparing a very big sling that was casting the stones to the enemy and then verse, verse 15 the bible says and he also made in jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal and his name spread far abroad for he was marvelously helped till he was strong akafanya katika yerusalemu mitambo ya vita iliyobuniwa na watu wa study iwekwe juu ya minara na juu ya buruji ili kutupa mishale na mawe makubwa jina lake likaenea mbali sana kwa kuwa alisaidiwa mno ajabu hata akapata nguvu the name spread jina lake lika because he was marvelously helped kwa sababu alisaidiwa those who are here on Thursday wale ambao walikuwa hapa siku ya the man of god was speaking about the help a man who was at the pool of Bethesda received. He was asking. Jesus asked the man. Do you want to get well? And then when Jesus came to the picture. He broke all the protocols. They were meant to enter to the pool. But when the man and encountered with Jesus. The Bible says that the man lifted his mat and he walked away. Why? Because he said to Jesus, I don't have a helper. And the man of God was asking us, who is your helper? Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, who is your helper? The rest of the people at the pool They had sisters They had brothers They had relatives But this man who was sick for that 8 years He had no, he had no helper And Jesus said because you don't have helper I am your helper May the Lord be your helper today in the name of Jesus. You have been fighting battles for long. House of worship, we have been in battles for a long season. People have begun to ask, who do you have helper? Like it happened in the times of the children of Israel. The Bible says that they were in the land of bondage. Like a people without a helper. But God say I am your helper May God be our helper in the name of Jesus May God be your helper in Jesus name Father I thank you because of this day I thank you because of the message you have for us today We have a 
established that you are God our helper. It is well known that you are God who is a covenant keeper. It is now known to your people that you never fail. That you are a faithful God. And today let your will be done. In Jesus name. Shout amen. Put your hands together and celebrate our God. I'm talking about a Appealing for mercy in battles. Appealing for mercy in battles. You know, a church is a place we are educated. We understand a lot of things, spiritual and even the physical. So, if you have never gone to a court, I remember one day my brother was accused falsely because he was working in a company and then some people came in and stole cars and they accused him because he was a steget and they said the church sheet was saying that you were a comp the church sheet ile sheet ya mashtaka so the church sheet was saying na kwamba hiyo karatasi ya kanisa ya kumshtaki so shtaki la kwanza amen shtaki ya kwanza ilikuwa you fail to stop theft kwamba uli uli shtaka la kwanza shtaka la kwanza halishindwa kuzuia uwizi amen and then the second church uh, was that he was part of the people he conspired to steal. But he was innocent. Innocent. Amen. 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 So he was innocent. Amen. So what happened is that he was taken to court. And then unfortunately they locked him. And then he was in industrial area somewhere. I remember I and pastor we went to see him. They opened the first gate for us. They locked it. They opened the second gate for us. They again locked it. They opened the third gate for us. They locked it. I was afraid. I didn't know whether we also come out of this place. Three doors with security people. But when my brother came to see us, I saw a different brother he had not shaved for a month I never saw him with long hair and but I looked at him he was different but right now I thank God because of the mercies of God he is no longer in that place but one thing I realized that this country has a system that has is called the court system. We have levels of courts. We have the magistrate courts. We have the courts of appeal. <laughs> we have the Supreme Court. So there are different levels of courts in this nation. So what happens if you take someone to court? You as a complainant or as a plaintiff who is the accused if there is a decision that is passed by a judge and you are not comfortable with it in our system it allows for 14 days to make what is called an appeal an appeal to make what is called an appeal to make an appeal and if that court 
you will still not agree with it you are also allowed to make another appeal to the higher court until justice is fairly served you are asking yourself what is an appeal write this down when I looked at different definitions of appeal I brought together and made my own so appeal is the following to make a serious urgent or heartfelt request to a higher authority for the reversal of the decision of the lower authority. Let me repeat again. Paka kila mtu andike. So that I will be speaking of appeal in your welewe. Appeal is to make a serious, number one, urgent, number two, heartfelt request to a higher authority for the reversal of the decision of the lower authority. Let me repeat for the last time. To make a serious, urgent, or heartfelt request to a higher authority for the reversal of the decision of the lower authority. That is what we call an appeal. That means there is lower authority and there is a higher authority. The courts at our district level, the magistrate courts, there are cases they handle. The court of appeal, there are cases they are handling. And the Supreme Court, there are cases they are also handling. Even in the kingdom, we should be aware of appealing to a higher authority. We have the authority given by people. And we have the authority that is from above. If there is anything happening to your life, and you are not comfortable with it, don't just agree with the decision of that pain. Don't agree with the decision of your employer sucking you. May you appeal to the higher authority. And in this case, the higher authority is our God. No case he cannot handle. No case he cannot determine. We came today to appeal. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor Today we are appealing to the higher authority Let me repeat my theme again Appealing for mercy In battles So I have given you the definition of appeal What is the battle? What is a battle? Write this down. A battle is a sustained fight. A sustained fight to resist something. I repeat again. A battle is a sustained fight to resist something. Vita ni kitu na ustahimili kwa muda ili ukapinge jambo. A sustained fight. Ni pepigano ambayo unahistahimili. To resist something. Ili ukaweze kupinga jambo. We are in battles. Tuko vitani. When you are saved. Wakati umeokoka. You are not exempted from battles. Haujae pushwa kwa vita. Follow me carefully. I'm, I'm establishing my sermon. Nifuate ki makini kuna kitu na mipitisha. We are always fighting battles. Hua tunapiga vita. You fight battles you know. Unapiga vita unavyojua. You fight battles you don't know. Na unapiga vita usio vichua. As you are seated here. Unapoketi hapa. 
There are people who are fighting you who know you. Kuna watu wanakupiga na wanakujua. There are fights you already know. Na kuna vita ambavyo tayari umevijua. And right now there are people who are fighting against you. Na kwa sasa kuna watu wanapigana dhidi yako. And you don't know. Na huwajui. And from the definition. Na kutoka kwa matambuzi ama kwa kile tulielezea. Inasema the battle is a resistance. Na kwamba vita ni kitu cha kupinga. To stop something. Ama kukomesha jambo. How many things have tried to stop you? Ni vitu vingapi vimezaribu kukuzuia? Yes, you are just here. Ndio uko tu hapa. And you are supposed to be a giant. Na unastahili kuwa jitu. We look at you as a youth. Tunakuangalia kama kijana. But you are not just an ordinary youth. Lakini wewe si kijana wa kawaida. We look at you, yes, you are part of the main ministry. Tunakuangalia wewe ni miongoni wa wanaume. But that is not the end of you. Lakini sio mwisho wako. There is a force that has resisted your manifestation. Kuna nguvu ambayo imezuia udhihirisho wako. We are going to raise a voice. Lakini leo tunaenda kuinua sauti. What has resisted house of worship? Ile kimepinga house of worship. It will no longer stand in the name of Jesus. Haitasimama kwa jina la Yesu. There is greatness in this ministry. Kuna ukuu katika huduma hii. There is a sustained battle. Kuna vita ambayo tumepitia. Against some few people in this church. Dhidi ya watu wachache huko kanisani. Some of us the man of God was saying on that day. Wengine wetu mtumishi wa Mungu alisema asking themselves why me watu walijiuliza mbona mimi why this is happening to me mbona hii inanitendekea it is good to fight a battle for one year and the rest of the years you are happy ni vema kupiga vita mwaka mmoja na miaka zilizobaki unafurahia it is good to go to a fight for one day and tomorrow you are enjoying ni vema kwenda vitani siku moja na siku nyingine how will it be that you are fighting one year lakini itakuwaje unapigana mwaka mmoja fighting a second year unampigana miaka 20 years you are still in the battle miaka 20 There is something great in you. And that thing will not be resisted anymore in Jesus name. If you hear me shout amen. That thing shall not be resisted. There is something that is resisted in me. If, if this is not your message wewe lala. you can sleep. Yes, utaweza ongezewa kitambaa. But this is my message. That I shall not be resisted. Tell your neighbor You shall not be resisted anymore. That fight that has resisted you becoming. Today we are appealing to the higher authority. And let that battle come to an end in Jesus name. Who said that you will never rise? <laughs> the Bible says lamentation 3:7. Who is he? Who is she? Ni nani huyo? Nimeongeza hiyo. Who is she? Ni nani huyo? That will say a thing. Ambaye atasema jambo. And it comes to pass. Na itakuja kutimia. When the Lord has not commanded. Wakati Mungu hajaamrisha. Who is this woman in Kware? Ni nani huyu mwanamke? That kwa will kwa say a thing. Ambaye atasema jambo. And it stops your generation. Na akakomesha. If the Lord has not commanded. Kama Mungu hajaamrisha. Who is this man from Lototo? Ni nani huyo kutoka Who is this woman from Western? Ni nani That we say a thing and stop house of worship from rising. Today we declare in the name of Jesus that that battle shall come to an end. Let it come to an end. I am tired of being in a battle. I have been discharged from 20 09 Nimekuwa katika huduma hii kutoka mwaka wa 2009 Yesterday I didn't know Sami did not know we were just talking Na jana hatukujua tulikuwa tunamtangaza And I received Na nikapokea where we began Mahali tulipo And where we ought to be today Na mahali tunastahili kuwa leo I will show you why Nitawaonyesha kwa nini Some men fail in the battle Wanaume wengine wanaanguka vitani I refuse to be a failure Lakini nakataa kutofaulu I refuse to compromise I refuse to be resistant where I was to be I shall be if you believe it shout amen this is a message for us we have been resisted long enough it is our here to become say amen Jeremiah 35 Jeremiah, I don't know whether I will finish but God will take us to where he wants us to go. Jeremiah 
verse 6 to 7 one day before I did that God wanted to make a point that the people of Israel they always listen to men but they don't listen to the voice of God so to teach Jeremiah God said to Jeremiah I want you to take a journey to a family of Rachael and from that generation they are called the Ra Rachelites. Rachel. So they are from the family of Rachab. They are called Rachelites. Yes. And they said bring them to the temple. And I want you to serve them wine. Jeremiah went. He brought them to the temple. He told the children of God I have wine for you. I want you to celebrate. Wine was a, a way of celebration. Remember the wedding at Cana. So there was wine where Jesus went. So wine was a celebration. But the Bible said they said to Jeremiah don't give us that. We will not take wine. This is what they said. We will not drink wine. For there is a man in our generation. There is one of the fathers in our generation. Who is called Jonadab. The son of Rejab. Our father commanded us. Saying. You shall drink no wine. Neither ye nor your sons forever. They believed the word of men than the word of God. Who told them to take wine? It is God. But they are saying we cannot do what God is saying. Because a man said. How many times we have said. If you need prayer for healing. Come in front. And it is God who is calling you. But you say the doctor told me. This sickness cannot go. House of worship. Who do you believe? House of worship. Do you believe the, the voice of God? Or the voice of man? A man somewhere say. House of worship will not rise. So when we are saying it's our heel of rising. You say maybe our next generation. Who do you believe? Going to the next verse. The Bible says they were also told they shall never build houses. They will never plant vineyards. They will never have their own vineyards. They will always dwell in the tents. Many days they will live in the land as strangers. We have lived as strangers for long. We but I came with a voice today. We shall take our possession in Jesus' name. We have lived in the tents. How many people have their houses in house of worship? Somebody said, You will be staying in other people's houses. Na sisi we are comfortable. Na tume tosheka na hiyo. Ni sisi minus me. <laughs> because I am not part of them. So wewe kama you are comfortable with that statement, wewe kaap. But as for me, I am not comfortable. Whoever said it, whether he's alive or much, he's dead. I will have my own vineyard in Jesus' name. I will plant my own in Jesus' name. I choose to hear the voice of God. Isaiah 54 verse 1 is asking, Whose report shall you believe? House of worship, whose report are you believing? 
may we believe the report of God. Shout, I will rise. Shout like you mean it, I will rise. It's our here to rise. If you are looking for people who are tired, let me be number one of the list of house of worship who are tired. This must not continue. But there is a way of fighting battles. Write this, there are two types of battles. Kuna vita inambili. There are two types of battles. Kuna vita inambili. Number one, we have visible battles. Kuna vita vya kuoneka nama vya kiasili. Visible battles. Vita mbavyo unaviona. These are the battles we call physical battles. Ni vita mbavyo tunavita vita vya kiasili. You are asking yourself, what are these physical battles? Unajiuliza hivi vita ni vya inakani. Write this down. These are conflicts. Between two opposing parties that are seen. Ni kumuzozano kate wa watu wa wili ambao wa mepitani ya chambo. Andika ni kikunyo maji. These are conflicts. That's why in the church you don't come to church like you are going to buy mutumba. You come to church because it's a school. So, next time you are coming, come prepared like you are coming to church. Amen. These are conflicts between two opposing parties that are seen. Baina ya watu wa wili wanaonekana. Watu sozana kwa sababu ya shamba. People fight because of land. So they have something they are seeing that is a source of conflict. And they know the neighbor they are fighting. So that one we call it a physical battle. And if you are infringed, infringed, umekosewa. That means you can go to court and take someone to court. And there are some battles like mtu wa kuguse mali ufai kuguswa. In the laws of this country, we have something called battery law. We have something called battery law. So is touching someone inconveniently where he or she should not be touched. It's, it's a crime. Whether you are in the matatu, wherever you are, if you touch someone inappropriately, they say it's a battery. You take that person to court. So you know who you are fighting. That is a physical battle. Battle number two. We have invisible battles. These we call them spiritual battles. Battles that you don't see. Battles that you are not aware. You are happy eating your food. But someone somewhere is fighting you. You are happy raising your children. Someone somewhere is fighting you. You are happy doing your job. Someone somewhere is fighting you. That is what we call spiritual battles. And this if you are writing say spiritual battles they are conflicts that cannot be seen with physical eyes. Conflicts that cannot be seen with physical eyes. And this is as Christians. These are the major battles we are fighting. Conflicts that we are not seeing. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then what are we fighting? The Bible begins to list. We fight against 
principalities. We fight against powers. We fight against rulers in darkness. We fight against spiritual wickedness. In the highest place, there are demons that rehearse. And there are demons that are highly ranked. The Bible is saying we are not fighting spiritual wickedness that is rehearsing. But we are fighting spiritual wickedness that is elevated in the kingdom of the devil. But I came with good news today. Even though these principalities have resisted you. Even though these powers have resisted you. Even though these rulers of darkness have resisted you. Even though this spiritual weakness has resisted you. We appeal to the higher authority. We appeal to the higher authority. Shout amen like a thunder. Say amen. Amen. Write these two statements. In Ishule. Shida ya kukua mwalim. These two statements will help you. Statement number one. Many battles have their physical and their spiritual dimension. Vita vingi vina mtazamu wa waki asili na vya kiro. Many battles vita vingi have their physical and spiritual dimension. Statement number two. We win battles from the spiritual realm whether physical or spiritual. We win battles from the spiritual realm kutoka kwa ulimwengu wa kiroho weta fiziko hata ikiwa kiasili or spiritual ama vita vya kiroho you cannot win a battle from below hawezi ukashinda vita kutoka chini if you are an ordinary citizen kama wewe ni mwananchi wa kawaida you cannot win a battle of a president hawezi kushinda vita vya the rais i was watching an interview of dennis itumbi nilikuwa na tazama hiyo so he said one day the president called him. He said, Dennis, if you are not supporting me, and you are supporting the, the debut president, he said, I will crash you. He said when he heard that word from the president, he said, I will crash you. He was he was an How to die can you fight a president? So there are kingdoms that are fighting us. But those who do not know how to win the battle, they shall fail in the battle. They will die in the battle. But those who know how to fight, they will never die in the battle in Jesus name. If you are here and you are not ready to die in the battle, lift your hand for one minute and say I will not die in the battle I shall not die in the battle I will not die in the battle I know who is my redeemer I know who is my victor I know who shall give me victory in the name of Jesus on Thursday I left the church. I told Sami I feel like fever. I don't know what is this. After playing the piano very well a miracle service. But at 9 I was too much shivering. So I bought, I bought one of the, the, the paracetamol. So, and I prayed actually before paracetamol. I left my people at the sitting room. I went to my bedroom. For one hour I said, God, you want to confirm this message. That we don't fight physically. We fight from the spiritual. I lifted my voice and I said this must come to an end because my household was complaining they had this and that 
ilikuwa na hii na hiki so the following day siku iliyofuata i became too much sick nikakuwa mgonjwa sana when i went to the hospital nilipoenda hospitalini they said it's your amoeba some bacteria they are the one that is causing this kasema sijini amoeba na but i know this is just a finger of the devil lakini kasema hii and i said to the devil i know who i am simwambia shetani najua this shall not progress it will not stop me from preaching and here i am speaking the word of god because we have god who is victorious quickly let me give you examples number one example from the bible of a man who failed to fight and he died because of his failures that is naboth first kings 21 wafalme wa kwanza 21 verse 2 going downwards mstari wa pili ukiteremka hiyo tutasoma kwa haraka ah oh, i know we are not used to long text but ni vizuri najua nilikuja ku realize man of god when you tell us see these verses you will go and read at home kumbukitwambia ve- tuende tusome maandiko haya nyumbani i'm very sure nina hakika very sure iko na uhakika if there are people who go to read at home kama kuna watu wanaenda kusoma nyumbani mungu tu ndiye anajua only god knows but mostly lakini sana sana inaisha na hiyo so tuzohe kusoma scriptures in the church amen because even jesus said the bible says kwa sababu hata yesu alisema biblia yasema hakusema this verse and this verse so sasa zingine when you hear this when you are in the battle you say the bible says because nilisoma kanisani amen ukiwa katika vita unasema biblia yasema kwa sababu nilisikia so, kanisani so 21 verse to the bible says and hab spake unto naboth ahabu akasema na naboti say give me thy vineyard akamwambia nipe shamba lako la mzabibu that i may have it for a garden of herbs nilifanye shamba la mboga because it is near unto my house maana ni karibu na nyumba yangu and i will give thee for it a better vineyard than Nami it mimi nitakupa badala ya shamba la mzabibu liliyo zaidi mzuri or if it seem good to thee i will give thee the worthy of it in money au ukipenda nitakupa fedha sawa sawa na thamani yake before twende yengine So the king is looking for the vineyard of somebody. Someone was resting in his house. Mwingine alikuwa anapumzika nyumbani kwake. Enjoying the beauty of God. Anaonyesha utukufu wa Mungu. Enjoying his family. Akifurahia na familia yake. Enjoying planting his vineyard. Akifurahia kupanda shamba lake la mzabibu. Someone is coming slowly. Na mtu anakuja polepole. And saying I see your vineyard is fit beautiful. Na anakasema naona shamba lako la mzabibu ni because it is close to me na kwa sababu liko karibu nami i want it na hitaji someone is saying mtu anasema i see you have a good job ninaona uko na kazi nzuri and because i'm a colleague na kwa sababu mimi tunafanya kazi i want your position na hitaji sehemu yako someone is saying today mtu anasema leo you have beautiful children kuna watoto warembo and because they are not too much saved na kwa sababu hawajaokoka sana that is the devil saying they sometimes come to me ni saa zingine wanakuja kwangu ni shetani sometimes they run away saa zingine wanatoroka I want your children. Nataka watoto wako. Someone is saying you have been enjoying this marriage. Wengine wanasema umekuwa ukifurahia ndoa hii. And I want your marriage. Na nahitaji ndoa yako. The same thing happened to Naboth. Hivyo vivyo nilikuwa kwa mtu anaitwa Naboth. Next verse Naboth said. Na katika mstari inayofuata Naboth akasema. I cannot give you. Bwana siwezi nikakupa. What was given to me? Nikupe urithi ambao nilipewa. By my forefathers. Na babu zangu. How many times you have given up? a gift that was given to you by God the joy that was given to you by God happiness that was given to you by God but I want you to refuse I will not give you Satan my children shall not be your possession my job shall not be your possession my marriage shall not be your possession my children the Bible says may the 
the Lord contend against those who contend against me and may the Lord save our children may the Lord save my children in the name of Jesus the Bible says that Naboth said God forbid God forbid God do not allow that I give what was given to me this voice I'm using it was given to me by God nobody shall silence it in Jesus name no man will silence it in Jesus name shout God forbid God forbid is good say God forbid is good God is good but it's not enough saying God forbid is not enough the, the only thing that Nabot said God forbid and then he disappeared so the Bible tells us the king went home salem he went home displeased how can a small boy say he cannot give me a vineyard and then he slept without food the Bible says there is a demon called Jezebel an opportunist demon Jezebel is wife he came and she came and said my husband why are you not hitting and then Ahab gave the story Jezebel said don't worry I have a plan I will give it to you the bible says she went and disguised she wrote down pretending to be Ahab the king she said in the letters sending it to the elders she said that bring Naboth out proclaim a fast bringing to her high place honor him celebrate him not everybody celebrating you means it there are people celebrating you to kill you but I pray those who are planning to kill you they shall never prevail shout amen so she wrote down the bible says the elders they implemented the letter they brought the people who will celebrate Naboth Naboth ignorantly innocently he was placed he was lifted he felt so good I was leading amplified verse 10 she said when he is celebrated being and worthless and worthless and principled men to testify against him they will say that Naboth has blasphemed the God and Naboth has also gone against the king and they will kill Naboth so Naboth without knowing these people came when he was celebrated and they began to give false witness and then Naboth was killed I refuse to die in the name of Jesus I will not just say God forbid and die my family shall not die none of the member of house of worship will die shout amen we are not going to die Naboth he died what a sad story beginning a battle God forbid he began saying God forbid but he did know how to win the battle write down quickly the mistakes of Naboth mistake number one Naboth did not wage spiritual war Naboth did not go to prayer 
Napot only say God forbid. I cannot give you what is mine. I cannot give you my marriage. I cannot give you my possession. But the Bible says he went silent. He did know that their battle that was physical it rose to spiritual. And that's why Jezebel said I want people to fast. Do you know why they were fasting? So that their spirit will be converted to evil. So that it will be easy to praise Caleb and the next minute you kill him because he knew battles are won in the spirit that I will make you celebrate me today and then when they say stone him you will be the first to stone me whoever that has made house of worship to stone the servants of God we declare in the name of Jesus that that battle we win from the highest authority in the name of Jesus imagine when we are not careful there is a spirit somewhere will turn against the men of God you will realize one day they are saying let us celebrate Meshach everybody is celebrating the next minute they say let us kill him and everybody wants to kill we rise against that spirit in Jesus name mistake number two of Naboth Naboth slept he slept nowhere is playing nowhere is waging war nowhere is praying mistake number three Naboth did not appeal to the higher authority he did not appeal to the higher authority remember we said an appeal is a reversal of a decision made by a lower authority Naboth thought that King Ahab was the highest authority he forgot that there is God the king of kings he forgot that there is God the king submit to him and sadly Naboth died I refuse to slumber. I want you just to bow your head. I just want to hear strings that bow your head. Say, I will not make mistakes like Naboth. House of worship, in this way we are living, with this, this church we cannot go far this way. House of worship, we, 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 there are mali. things we will never do this way. How can we have two people in intercessory? How can we have one person in the prayers of the church? And we pretend we are not seeing the battles that are on God. I want you to pray that net nobody die because of slumber. May I not die because of slumber the Bible says that the devil laughs you can look up I believe you prayed if you are pretending God help you the Bible says Matthew 13 25 but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. Do you know what we are fighting? We are not fighting the enemy. We are fighting the seed. The time you slept, he planted. 
Amen. He went away. So when you are here, the enemy, the enemy, you are fighting the sea. So you need to know how to deal with the sea. Because if you are not careful, a seed that was below the tiles, I saw this picture the man of God shared. A seed that was below the tiles, it resisted and grew and it became a plant. What yeah. if this seed is a seed of evil? House of worship. House of worship. How are we going to rise if we are not dealing with the seed that the devil planted in the times of our slumber? But I have hope for you. Jesus says in Matthew 15, 13, any plant that my father did not plant, it shall be uprooted. May every seed that was planted, seed of instability, seed of failure, seeds of poverty, seeds of sickness, seeds of lonelessness, seeds of 50 nears. We will not raise 50 nears. We, we, we are a church without saving. If I ask you how much do you have in your bank? How much have you stored as your saving? Tonight, and then we, we I refuse it. that seed in the name of Jesus. I saw in Facebook somebody took a rat. And he ate someone's he money. killed the rat. And he threw the money. Him, the so that that person may if there is a woman or a man who did that, we appeal to the highest authority in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not be limited. We shall not be limited. Any seed that was planted, not by my heavenly father, by a as we finish the second person an example from the Bible is Paul if you read Acts from previous chapters before 23 God said to Paul I want you to go back and testify on me in Jerusalem. And then people were like, Paul, if you go, they will kill you. But Paul said, I must go. The Bible says that Paul went and then one day he was in the temple. I'm carrying the story forward. He was in the temple. And then because they saw him with us, some friends, they said, we have seen a man who is teaching our people a wrong doctrine. And the Bible says they cornered him. They arrested him. And then the commander of the Roman Empire he captured him but before he took him to the barracks the Bible says that Paul said give me one chance that I may speak to these people he said people I'm not the one you are accusing me he spoke in the Jews language they kept quiet because they realized he's speaking their language he said, I was once a Pharisee. I was once following your doctrine. But I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus changed me. After that statement, he thought they would say something different. They shouted, kill him. Arrest him. But God had told him, as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, you will also testify.
testify on me in Rome. So he was taken to court. And then they accused him. The Bible says 40 men said we have to kill this man. They said this man we know how to kill him. We will we not fight physically. We have taken an oath. We will drink nothing. We will eat nothing until we kill him. But the Bible says a son of the sister of Paul he had the secret. May the Lord reveal the conspiracy of your enemies. May the Lord reveal the conspiracy of house of worship. If there are men planning evil against us, they shall be revealed. And then one thing, the difference between Paul and Naboth. Ha, give your neighbor high five. And tell your neighbor, we have to win this battle. We have to win this battle. The difference between Paul. Paul knew how to fight. The Bible says when the son brought the news, he said, bring me the commander. I have to act. I will not just say God forbid like Naboth. For me, I know how to fight. He said, when they say, bring me out, don't take me because they are planning to kill me. If you go forward, if you go forward to 25, Acts 25, verse 11, now he has gone, I don't know the king, whether it was Felix or who. He was before some leader. And they said, there is an accusation that you are misleading the people. They read the accusation. But verse 11 of chapter 25, this is what Paul said. For if if be an offender I have committed or have committed anything worthy of death I refuse not to die may you say I refuse to die may you say I refuse to die we refuse to die Paul did not say God forbid Paul said I refuse to die what you have accused me I know you are operating in a certain authority but I know there is authority higher than you and they said you are submitted to the Roman Empire and because of that I appear we appear when you refuse to die don't stay there. Make an appeal so that there will be a reversal. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. We know there is a throne of thrones. We know there is a king of kings. When the kings of this world they are trying to fight us there is a king of kings. I refuse to die. We refuse to die. We will never die in that battle. We will not die. We are appealing tonight I don't know whether it is tonight or morning but we are appealing he said I appear and the Bible says to Caesar you have requested to Caesar you shall go may you as you have requested that poverty is not your level people have said your family will never rise people have said house of worship we will never rise we are appealing to the higher authority say amen my prayer has been this week 
that we have members who are getting tired who are saying we refuse we pretend sometimes that we are not seeing the battles how long shall we bury our heads when we see battles going on in house of worship women of house of worship how long shall we bury our heads when we see men and women they are crying every night saying God why me how long shall we lie down and my prayer sees that they was that we will have intercessors who are going go before God without a prayer item they are saying God I come to you may we obtain mercy may we obtain mercy when I came this morning I found the intercessors lying down on the altar without a prayer point saying may we obtain mercy the word I heard from Pastor Emmanuel is that may we have mercy and then when I was seated there I was just crying I did not pray I was crying and saying God this is our season let this be our season I refuse that we will remain this way we have, we have begged you that come early to church so that our church will change. We plead with you. We will never rise without prayer. How many times shall we give you this solution? Sai, we give offerings. We have carried, don't be ashamed, we have carried 50. <coughs> we have coins in our pocket. And we are happy. This is what we are offering. When the Lord has more for us, churches that have risen, churches that are higher level, I told Sami an example of a church that I know. We were in the same hall. They used to finish the service we come. They are not where we are today. We are still in the battleground. How long shall we fight? How long shall we fight? Be silent. Oh, Ten years we are fighting. Just the part of Geza. Ten years you are still fighting lawlessness. Progress limited. Family scattered. Men are not making steps. We see people go. We are still battling. We tell you church come to church we pray. Do we want to die like Naboth? I refuse to die. We refuse to die. Church do you want to end this way? Do you want your marriage to end? Nataka ndoa yako imalizie hivyo. Do you want to have a story like Naboth? Do you want people to give a history and say there was a man in house of worship, a woman who fought the battle and succumbed to the battle? Or do you want to be like Paul and say I appeal. I appeal. Can I have the worshippers here Worshippers just join me and I want you just to pray. I don't want to lead you. I want you to pray and say, God, this is my day. This is our day. Tumepigana, tumejifanya tuoni. Naiza ongea kiswaili, tumejifanya tuoni. Tumejifanya tuoni. Chifanya 
higher to all. And we need God to take us to a higher level. And we need to sit. Just be on your feet. I want us to make prayers. One way of overcoming battles is to wage war. <coughs> One way of overcoming is to say I refuse. I want to hear somebody saying I refuse. I don't know what you are refusing but refuse. Just hear the sound. Make the sound. Make the sound. Make the sound. Say I refuse. I rente pa kaya ra. Shente ke parande re bo zente kaya ra ba. Mande zente ke parande zi kaya ra bo zanta. I refuse. Rente pa ra da ra bo zanta. I rente ke para ra ba. Paul said I refuse. I refuse to be here. I refuse. We don't come to church, come to me attend chama. I refuse rente kayada. Eke te parande de rebo zeta. Rente kafa in the name of Jesus. We refuse, we wage war. We rise in this battle. We will not die like Naboth. We will not die like Naboth. Rante ke paradaba. The Bible says in Numbers, Numbers 23, Numbers 23, verse 23. Come out and go to the kuite. Wombe we 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 labda sai. Come away uko sawa na kuhusu wende wote jua. Come away we you are okay. Chukua kiti chako wende wote jua. Wacha wala mbao wana jua kushinda vita. They shall raise a voice in this place. Numbers 23, verse 23, the Bible says, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be of Jacob and of Israel what has God wrought.